Hello, my name is Alex McGregor, and today I'm going to show you how to make panoramas at night that look like this. Or maybe even like this. So the panorama technique can be used to create really wide, huge field of view images with the Milky Way going all the way over the sky and you can see the entire arch. This is done by stitching together several frames in a row that were taken with a relatively wide angle lens, like a 16 or 24 millimeter. And that second image I showed you was taken in a similar way by stitching images together, but using something like a 50 millimeter or maybe an 85 millimeter lens. The reason you would use a longer lens like this and stitch them together is to create an image with a similar field of view as say a 24 millimeter, but with a lot more resolution and megapixels. So it changes this 20 megapixel full frame camera into essentially a medium or large format camera because you get so much more data for that one image. And doing this gives you an image with much better details, much better resolution, and you can print it to a huge, huge size. And you also have more flexibility if you want to do some cropping and post-processing. Now creating a panorama is pretty straightforward. You can take your camera and shoot images as you pan across the scene and stitch them together in an editing software like Photoshop. The idea is simple, but once you start doing it at night, it does get a little bit more complicated. And especially if you add something like a tracker, it adds one more level of complication to it. So today I'm gonna to teach you the basic principles for creating a panorama. Then tonight we're gonna to go out in the field and make it happen. Now in order to go out and create a panorama of the night sky, it would be good if you're already very familiar with your camera and your lens, and you can already take nightscape pictures. That means you know how to focus your camera at night, you know how to set up your tripod nice and sturdy, and you also know how to use the live view on your camera. That's another key tool for this. A little bit of the equipment you'll need, it's pretty straightforward camera, lens, tripod. You don't need a tracker, although I will be shooting on a tracker tonight, and all these principles that I'm gonna be sharing apply to both tracked and untracked images. Something that would be really helpful is a ball head or a pano head on your tripod, as opposed to one of those like two-handed clunky things. Something more fluid like this is much nicer. You'll also need some editing software to stitch these images together for you. I'm going to be using Lightroom and Photoshop, but I'm going to post down below some of my favorite editing software that is not one of those two. The first step to creating a panorama image is planning your shot. You want to know what part of the Milky Way or night sky you want to be photographing. You want to know what time that part of the night sky is visible, when it's going to line up with your foreground, and you also want to know what the moon schedule is doing to make sure you don't get out there and then it's ruined by a half full moon that's just washing out all of the stars. And also you want to plan what type of panorama you're going to take. If you want to do that more detailed, intimate, high resolution view with a long lens, or if you want to bring a really wide, even a fisheye lens and get that huge sweeping panoramic of the Milky Way arch. And you also want to plan what settings you're going to use. So take your practice shots and make sure you know exactly how your lens functions and what aperture you want to use, what your optimal ISO for your camera is, all of those things you want to have planned beforehand. So when you get out there, you can just start shooting and you don't have to be fussing around with those different settings. You'll also want to plan out what pattern you're going to use for capturing your panorama images. If you're going to do a row, if you're going to do a grid, if you're going to go up and down, however you want to do it, you already want to have it in your mind so you can get out there and just start taking those shots. Also, if you're tracking, you're going to be taking two minute or four minute exposures and you'll be surprised how far the sky moves in that time. So if you want to get a part of the sky that might be in the lower right corner, you probably want to start there because if you take 
you know, 10 or 20 minutes getting to that frame, that part of the sky could have dipped too low on the horizon and you will have missed it. So because of this, generally I start shooting in rows that start bottom right and I work to my left and then I go up and I work left to right and I go in a grid shape like that. But this is just how I do it. It makes sense for my brain. However, you need to lay out the pattern that works best for you should be just fine. Now to help explain what I mean by planning out your shot, I'm gonna run upstairs and grab something of a visual aid for us. So this is a panorama that I shot of the Milky Way over the Arapaho Basin Ski Resort. You can also see Keystone, Breckenridge, and Copper Ski Resorts down there in the corner. It's one of my favorite prints I've ever done. This was shot using the Canon 6D with the Rokinon 24mm 1.4 lens. And it was made using 12 different frames. Four for the foreground and eight for the sky. Because the Milky Way rotates like this throughout the night, I wanted to make sure that I got the planet Jupiter in there as well as enough room around it so it would really stand out. So I started shooting in this bottom right corner. I did one, two, three, four images, and then I moved up and did one, two, three, four going back that direction. And then I was able to point my camera down and get shots of the foreground. This is generally how I like to plan out my evening of shooting because you never know if the conditions are gonna change or a cloud is gonna come in or something's gonna ruin your sky. So if the conditions are good for shooting the sky when you're out there, shoot that first and then move to your foreground. Okay, enough visual aids, I'll be right back. So that's how I usually lay out my grid for capturing the images. Now let's talk about the actual process of getting from one shot to two to three to eight like I did for that last one. To make sure you have the right amount of overlap, I always like to be using my live view and use what I refer to as an anchor star. So a bright star or a planet like you just saw with Jupiter and Saturn are great for this. They're bright enough to show up through your live view on almost any camera you're gonna be shooting on. I like to use those to judge how far to rotate my camera in order to make sure I have enough overlap for the computer to be able to figure out what the panorama is and stitch it together. A general rule is I like to have between one third and 50% of the frame overlapped. As you can see in these examples of shots that I took right here, that gray spot between those two frames is the overlap that I chose to use to create that specific panorama. Now, this whole thing will be easier to show you guys than to actually tell you guys. And because it's difficult to film this at night, I have a little bit of an experiment upstairs. Let's go check that out. All right, we're now upstairs. And because of our fantastic lack of overhead lighting in this house, Laura and I hung up these string lights to act as overhead lighting. And I thought it could be an interesting way of demonstrating how to use those anchor stars as references for how far we move our camera during a panorama. So I've gone ahead and unscrewed most of them so they could represent those brightest stars that you'll be able to see in the live view. Now we're looking up at our night sky and you can see those light bulbs that I haven't unscrewed represent those anchor stars. So the one I would really pay attention to is on that bottom left. I'm going to take my first photograph in this position and then I'm going to pan over using that star as a reference and move it right about to the center of the frame. And I'm also keeping it a similar distance from the bottom of the frame. This helps to know that you're panning level across the scene. So I take my next shot here and move it over to the right edge Take my next shot here. Now I need to find new anchor points. So those two stars right in the middle of the frame will do. I'll take my shot here, move them to the edge. Take my next shot here, find some new anchor points and take my next shot there to finish off the panorama. All right, I think that's enough practice for today. So tonight I'm taking out my Canon 6D and my 50 millimeter Sigma, and I will see you guys back in Lightroom. Ah, so
So we had a great night out there. Uh, I went a little bit south of Hoosier Pass towards South Park, Colorado. Let's jump into the computer and we'll take a look at these shots we got. Jumping into Lightroom here, we can see the shots that I got that I'm gonna make part of my panorama. In this first one, we can see the first anchor star I used is right here where my mouse is. And if I'm gonna leave my mouse there and go to the next image. So my mouse, this star was here and in the panorama, I moved it from this position over to this position. And then I found my next anchor star, which is right up here. I'm gonna again, leave my mouse there so you can see the overlap. So it was right here and I moved it over to there. And now we have Jupiter and Saturn, which are really obvious. They were here and I moved them over to there. So that's the general pattern that I have. And I kept it going uh, as I panned up. I moved Jupiter and Saturn about halfway across the image. And then I moved them back over here. So I started on the bottom right and I worked right to left moved up and now I'm working left to right. Found this next bright star as my anchor point and moved it from where my mouse is over to here. And now this was, was where it got a little bit tricky because I knew I wanted to move this star further than the edge of the frame. I moved it, let's see what that one was. Yeah, so I used this star next to it as my anchor point, moved that right to the edge and then I found this next star and just kind of went like that. And then I got to my foreground, turned my tracker off. As you can see, the stars blurred and had to wait for cars not to be there, but was able to capture this panorama of the foreground. Now I'm gonna show you guys how easy it is to stitch these together in Lightroom. I am going to make just a couple of very simple edits. The most important one is this enable profile correction and I'm doing that because it cleans up the vignetting in the corners. This lens is excellent and the vignetting is very slight, but it still exists. So I'm gonna hit that, hit remove chromatic aberration. And now I'm going to sync these settings through all of these images. Synchronize. And I'm gonna jump back to my library and selecting the first of my sky panorama and the last of holding shift and selecting the last of my sky panorama gets all the ones in between. Right click, edit in or photo merge to panorama. And it looks like Lightroom did an excellent job. I always like to play with the spherical and cylindrical settings. The cylindrical I think makes everything look a little more natural. The spherical kind of compresses it more than I think is realistic. And the perspective, sometimes it works and sometimes it does real weird stuff. Looks like it did okay, but I still like the cylindrical better. I'm gonna move this boundary wrap a ways and I'm gonna unclick the auto crop just to see what it's doing. Playing around with these a little bit. Yeah, I like it about there at about 80 and I'll click auto crop. Do not click auto settings because especially for Astro, you don't want Lightroom doing your thinking for you. And hit merge. Now that that merge is done, we can find it right here. And now we have a tracked sky panorama stitched together nicely and we can repeat that same process for the foreground. Now Lightroom is done making my foreground panorama and I'm gonna simply blend these two images together in Photoshop. If you wanna see a more detailed breakdown of how I blend images together and do my Milky Way editing, you can click on this video right up here. But for now, we're just gonna go warp speed through this.
there is our final product. It definitely was a colorful night. This image came out super bright and vivid with all that air glow, but it's exciting to see all those gassy details you can get by doing the panorama. And my final image here is 1100 pixels by 9200 pixels. So way bigger than just my regular 6D resolution. And according to Photoshop, the print size is 47 and a half inches by 38 at 240 pixels per inch. But if I drop that pixels per inch down and expanded it a little bit, this can be a massive, huge print of Mount Lincoln with the Milky Way. So thank you guys so much for watching. It does mean a lot. And I want to encourage everyone to follow me on Instagram and we can go back and forth there. And if you used any of my videos to make a product, tag me on Instagram. I'd love to see what you guys have done with it. And as always, YouTube loves the algorithm and the engagement. So please give me that thumbs up, comment your thoughts or questions. And if this is your first time watching one of my videos, please do hit that subscribe button and I'll be coming out with more. And yeah, I just can't stop looking at this picture on my screen over here. So that is all for today. My name's Alex McGregor. And when the stars are out, I'll see you there.